John McCain, it seems like the media and political establishment have been ramping up for his death for about six months now. Yeah. Because he was, you know, I thought in the hospital really near the end of his life when he rushed back to be like that final decision on- uh, To not overturn Hel- Obamacare. Yeah, yeah, that. But then that was like six or eight months ago. It's like, it seems like he's just always been on the brink of death, but somehow still making the rounds. He was still kicking and still number one guy in DC. Everyone seemed like they loved him the most. It was announced that McCain was disinviting Trump to his future funeral, which is such a weird news story in and of itself. Like McCain's already planning who he's going to invite for his funeral. McCain wrote a letter to be released after he died and shit. McCain chose one of Magnitsky's friends or something as one of his pallbearers for his casket. I mean, just a lot of preparation McCain put into his own death and funeral. For PR reasons. I mean, it's just really odd. Unusual. (laughs) But Robbie Olivia Newsy would say, um, by the way, using the occasion of a person's death to attack them is not edgy or cool. It's childish and cowardly. You're not Christopher Hitchens. You're an asshole. (laughs) Which is funny because um, Sam Husseini responded directly to that tweet and was like, actually, Christopher Hitchens was a fucking asshole, too. And I, (laughs) I drank with him and he was like a piece of shit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so John McCain, I mean, it's it, we can get into his legacy of war crimes and how he championed every single war and, you know, he's on the ground in Libya, he's on the ground in Syria, he's on the ground in Ukraine within literally weeks of these so-called uprisings that are really just regime change operations from these civil society organizations that John McCain was really a champion of. The consensus got together to mourn him in such a ridiculous way, because in a sense, he really represented that notion of American exceptionalism. He was heralded as this hero. He was heralded as this human rights champion, because even though he really represented bloodshed, that's the mask that everyone loves to pick up and be like, no, this is really America. No, John McCain was actually responsible for the deaths of millions of people. Absolutely. I asked the question, and I saw other people raising a similar point to this, but it almost seemed like all the people at his funeral and the general climate, like even the media, where they were mourning the death of this foreign policy DC blob orthodoxy and not so much mourning his death directly. It was like the symbolism of what his death meant. That seemed like to be the subtext of it. And I just right. find that very fascinating and strange and very positive, actually, that if that's what they were mourning the death of, then that is a step in a positive direction. That needs to die. And obviously, there's going to be other people who will pop up in his place, Tom Cotton, Lindsey Graham, Marco Rubio, etc. But, I mean, at one period of time, McCain was the main conduit for neoconservative foreign policy to be put into bills and, and things like that and amendments. Bill Kristol and Robert Kagan loved John McCain. He was their favorite guy. Absolutely, 100% their favorite politician. He was also responsible for really kickstarting a lot of this Cold War 2.0 rhetoric. He actually was the main guy who sponsored the Magnitsky Act originally. McCain was ahead of the curve on all this stuff, and he really was the conduit for this sort of neoconservative orthodoxy to be pushed through into D.C. He was the most hawkish politician. And I know maybe that sounds hard to believe to some people who aren't familiar with him, but it is completely true. You can look it all up. He was behind every single possible war push ever. He literally went on the ground within days yeah. of anything happening in any of these countries. And he's posing with neo-Nazis in Ukraine. He's posing with like ISIS and Al-Qaeda officials in Syria. I mean, he's right there. Like more so than I think anyone else in the Absolutely. entire government. If this doesn't say at all, Lockheed Martin, one of the, <laughs> if not the biggest defense company besides Boeing, says... They tweeted out, remembering John McCain, and they wrote a eulogy with their fucking logo across it and their font saying, Senator McCain was an exceptionally courageous leader and a true patriot who dedicated his life and service to our nation. We joined the country in mourning his loss. And it goes on and on. It's written by Marilyn Hoosen, the CEO of Lockheed Martin. And they were fucking genuinely crazy. mourning his loss because he yeah. secured high returns for all shareholders for years and years and years for Lockheed Martin. Oh my God. Can you imagine how much he was responsible for upping their profits? They called the fucking defense budget the John McCain bill. Yeah. Yeah. 
that the yeah. fact that they would even name it after him like right before he dies is just odd too. How much of his death was planned out? It's fucking crazy weird. And I'm no way suggesting that he was like killed or it was like scheduled to happen. I'm just saying that's just such a weird thing to think about how much effort was put into like preparing people for his death and enshrining him in history already by naming this bill after him. Let's just really quickly go over his legacy and then let's talk about the media's disgusting coverage of his death. Uh, Just really quickly so people realize how despicable of a person he really was. He voted against recognizing MLK Day. He voted against imposing sanctions against apartheid South Africa on six separate occasions. (laughs) He voted against gay marriage. He voted against LGBT adoption. He voted against civil unions. That's not even the war stuff. This is just how disgusting he was as like a conservative and a pro-apartheid one at that. He was involved in this scandal back in 1986 where he received all these illegal political contributions from... Did you hear about that, the Keating scandal? I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, so he was one of the only people that got out unscathed from this ridiculous scandal that ended up taking down all these other senators, and for some reason it didn't touch him. When he was in Vietnam and got shot down, he was on his way to bomb a light bulb factory. So he was on his way to commit war crimes like he was doing already in Vietnam. So that's why it's so disgusting to see, you know, Megan McCain at his funeral saying that he stood up for the life and liberty of other people in other lands. Isn't that amazing? I mean, Megan McCain back in 2011, oddly enough, did an interview with Donald Trump while he was pushing birtherism full time. And she said, can I work on your presidential campaign if you run? And he was like, yes. So it's just incredible that they turned his big funeral into this resistance meeting and it's the who's who of the resistance, you know, Kissinger, Bush, all the war criminals in one room. Someone made a funny comment. They're like, just close the doors of his funeral and start a war crimes tribunal. Yeah. Yeah. There was even a Washington Post article heralding him as a human rights hero. And in the photo itself, in the article was (laughs) him standing with Ukrainian neo-Nazis. Yeah. One of the That's one of the primary far right um, leaders who actually like said he agreed with the Holocaust and that like Jews were evil. It's crazy. So during the Vietnam War, he was captured by the North Vietnamese Army after being shot down on his way to bomb a civilian light bulb factory. So this was one of twenty three bombing missions he was flying as part of Operation Rolling Thunder, where the U.S. dropped six hundred forty three thousand tons of bombs on the country and. Someone in RT makes the comment, you know, you don't have to go and belabor the point of how horrifying the Vietnam War was. But this revisionism, you know, in his funeral that the Vietnam War was somehow waged for peace and human rights is just absolutely horrifying to say. There are Vietnamese children walking the earth today who will die by stumbling on the landmines we planted or unexploded ordnance we left behind. There are as yet unborn Vietnamese babies who will enter the world with misshapen heads and giant tumors as a result of the defoliants we showered on their country 50 years ago. So that was quoted in an RT article just talking about the true legacy of the Vietnam War. That's going on today. That's still going on today. Comes Wait, out just really his, quickly. I just want yeah. to interject. I just watched this bizarre movie that's like a sycophantic puff piece on the last year of the Obama administration. Obama was talking at both sides of his mouth on like war crimes we had done in the past. And the Obama administration visits Laos and tries to apologize for the secret war and shit there for so long. Apparently like over 20 people in Laos still die a year from unexploded landmines left by the U.S. military. Oh yeah. Fucking insane. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. No, there's hundreds of people who die like across those countries. From yeah. landmines. That needs to be part of the conversation as reparations for these people who are still suffering, trying to clean up the environment as well. It's just absolutely shocking what the legacy is in Vietnam and the fact that this can be revised as him being some hero who really stood firmly against torture. He actually didn't. And, you know, he comes out even remarking as late as 2000 saying, I hate the gooks, I will hate them as long as I live, even though we're talking about a population that's pretty substantial in this country, where, you know, just seven years later, he ran for president. He refused to apologize for the remark. He said, I was referring to my prison guards, and I'll continue to refer to them in language that might offend people. Then he joins this anti-communist cause in the mid-80s. He joined the advisory board to the U.S. Council for World Freedom, which was an American affiliate of the World Anti-Communist League. And there's videos of him. Rania did a really amazing breakdown for In the Now. 
it was great because there was all these video clips that I'd actually never seen before of McCain looking directly in the camera and being like, please arm them. We need to get them weapons. But yeah, I don't know if you have anything else to say just about the stuff that he did on the ground in these wars. No, I mean, just that Elizabeth O'Baggy was his intern while she was working for the Syrian Emergency Task Force and the Institute for Study of War when it was discovered that her PhD was fake. Also, McCain traveled to Syria to meet with some of these rebels, fighters that were being funded by the CIA with Maz Mustafa of the Syrian Emergency Task Force, which by all appearances appears to be some kind of not necessarily a CIA cutout operation, but some kind of operation that's being mirrored by CIA activity. And that's who he's photographed with in that infamous photo you see. But yeah, other than that, I mean, I don't really have much else to say about him. He's just one of the worst neocon warmongers ever. And I didn't really realize it until I was done making a very heavy agenda. When I really oh, realized Oh, how it. much? Yeah. And we could talk about how he's responsible for a lot of the Trump... You know, oh yeah, th- this idea that he's that he's a rebuke to Trump, that what he represented is this era, this golden age of like American exceptionalism and humanitarianism that Trump just is totally throwing in the trash can is laughable because Sarah Palin was his VP. Sarah Palin was the proto Donald Trump. And more examples of the hypocrisy, the fucking ridiculous hypocrisy of some of these neocons for saying that Trump is just so uncouth, he's making America look awful. I mean, Sarah Palin is the proto-Trump, and according to Fred Barnes of the Weekly Standard, neocon, I think he actually signed some of the PNAC documents too, he admits that Sarah Palin was discovered on the Weekly Standard cruise, and it turns out that Bill Kristol and others from the Weekly Standard, after this quote-unquote discovery, helped facilitate the first meeting between McCain's people and Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin lives in Alaska. Weekly Standard puts on an Alaskan cruise. Um, You could link all these things back, and it's just really fascinating how much they're trying to rewrite history and pretend they're not responsible for this. Trump is an extension of what they did, period. What he's doing is a complete extension of their horrendous behavior. And they could deny it all they want, but they're directly responsible for this shit. That is really funny that they pretend like John McCain really represents this bastion of the establishment, really underpinning what America's all about. But yeah, absolutely. He normalized and paved the way for Sarah Palin, the proto-Trump back in 2008. Horribly lost. Trump was just a happy coincidence that he kind of fell into Steve Bannon's lap because Bannon was trying to cultivate this image of this anti-establishment fighting the deep state. This was all talking points that were peddled around when Sarah Palin was really hot. Bannon really took her under his wing. He made a documentary about her called The Undefeated, Mm -hmm. which came out in July 2011, which chronicled her rise to prominence as this populist figure taking on crony capitalism within the Republican Party and how her fall from grace was actually by her own party's establishment and liberal elites. And and Um, around that same time, Abby, I just want to mention really quickly that Infowars and Alex Jones started promoting her as well around 2011, 2012. This is amazing. Yeah, Bannon even said back in 2011, he said he identified Palin as a, quote, outsider with a, quote, drain the swamp mentality. So these talking points that everyone thinks that Trump is this independent guy with the streak that will stand up to anyone and he can't be bought out. These are just literal talking points from Steve Bannon. Yeah. And I'm convinced that Steve Bannon is still feeding him stuff and it just worked better with him out of the White House because he, Absolutely. you really have not seen Trump go after Bannon as he has with all of these other people who have left. Really quick inside baseball shit about that is that based on this new Bob Woodward book, that reason could just be that Bannon didn't get along with Trump's family and Jared right. Kushner and Ivanka. And there's a lot of sparring between them. And it could just be that he couldn't get along with his family and he needed to get him out of the White House, but he's still advising, he's still important. Absolutely. That could and be so, the reason. So, I'm just speculating on that. But. Yeah. So back in the day, this was Undefeated was this terrible movie that he made about Sarah Palin, but he was still trying to cultivate her as a potential candidate. And she's the one who said she didn't want to run. So then Bannon was looking for someone else to champion this white working class movement that he had hoped for for years and years. And it never really came to fruition. And so that's when in 2015, he really just linked full force with Trump to just adopt that exact same persona. But he just did it really well. 
Sarah Palin looked like a fucking idiot trying to do it, but Trump did it perfectly. Even just how eerie this rhetoric is, Governor Sarah Palin, this is a quote from her. She was like, I'm not a member of the permanent political establishment. And I've learned quickly these last few days that if you're not a member in good standing of the Washington elite, then some in the media consider a candidate unqualified for that reason alone. She's even more coherent than Trump would say it. It totally it's- shows that this was all pre-planned for Trump. This has been in the making for a long time. And, totally you know, fake populism. Unbelievable. So let's get into what the media did about John McCain. I think the most surprising part was Ocasio-Cortez, who tweeted, John McCain's legacy represents an unparalleled example of human decency in American service. He meant so much to so many. My prayers are with his family. My whole thing is why even say anything? People have defended her and they're like, well, she's getting into Congress and she needs to like play the game. Why do you need to defend John McCain as a champion of human rights and human decency? He's a disgusting war criminal. That really upsets me because as someone who's a staunch anti-imperialist and who really looks for that first and foremost from candidates and political people that I want to stand behind, that disturbs me greatly. So just like how Bernie Sanders turns out, he was really trying to push for debilitating sanctions on Venezuela in response to their election. Just like the sanctions that Trump put in place that have crippled and seized the ability for our show to function. Yeah, apparently Bernie Sanders was behind that as well. Yeah, and just in contrast to that, I mean, one of the funniest parts to me about all this is, again, one of the only good things I've seen Trump do, and it's kind of an inconsequential thing, but the press are so upset that Trump refused to say McCain's name when he signed that bill into law that was named after him. First, that was the big affront before he died, right? And then when McCain died, a CNN reporter is just like badgering Trump in the uh, Oval Office saying, you know, when all the press shouts questions, he's like, Mr. President, do you have any thoughts on John McCain? Do you have any thoughts at all about McCain? Do you believe John McCain was a hero, sir? Nothing at all about John McCain? Okay. And then the whole time Trump is literally just like looking forward, like scowling <laughs> as the guy. Yeah, can you saying, imagine being a quote journalist and aggressively hounding Donald fucking Trump? You're in front of the president of the empire, and that's your question. Sir, is John McCain a hero, sir? Sir, please. John McCain, hero? Hero? It's so funny. And I I gotta admit, oh. I really like the fact that Trump is just not saying anything and just like obviously hates McCain and he's not making, he's not hiding that at all. I forgot to say one quick thing about McCain. Not only did he speak out to try to save Senate funding for Nixon's secret bombing campaign of Cambodia, which killed half a million people, but then he also explains that the U.S. never really lost the Vietnam War, Robbie. He said, what really happened was that Americans were tired of dying. He Uh was like, we got tired of dying and killing before the Vietnamese did. Oh yeah, he makes no bones about the fact that he still supported the U.S. to continue in Vietnam. It's like the people who say the Japanese would not have stopped killing and raping and stabbing babies with swords. They were just like, the Japanese were too crazy. That's why we had to use the atomic bombs, right? It's all, it's all neocon myth-making and like right. underpinnings for like all this stuff. Stuff I've heard when neocons talk about uh, the Vietnam War. That's how they talk yeah. about it too. Robert Kagan feels the same way. One of the pundits who had the most hilarious reaction to the whole John McCain dying thing is Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper just absolutely adores John McCain in every way. In fact, I think John McCain picked Jake Tapper for his personal liaison to report on his trip back to Vietnam. They've been close for a while. We already know that Jake Tapper was at the forefront of criticizing Trump for not properly glorifying John McCain when he passed the near trillion dollar defense budget. So he was his personal stenographer for a 2000 trip to Vietnam. When the former CNN host Howard Kurtz asked Tapper back then, when you're on the campaign bus with McCain, do you make a conscious effort not to fall under the magical McCain spell? What? And Tapper Holy says, fuck. oh, you can't. He was like, you become like Patty Hearst when the SLA took her. So basically he's joking like, nope, we fell under his spell. So apparently this is a little jokey thing within the Washington Beltway that everyone falls into McCain's magical spell. They're like aliens. I mean, this is one of the things I was talking to mom about, how much this reveals and just reemphasizes that idea that there's so much in a bubble in this DC Beltway mainstream Mm -hmm. media community. The general public doesn't really like McCain that much. Most people on the Republicans remember him as the guy who lessened immigration restrictions. Most people on the left remember him as the guy who had Sarah Palin as his VP. The general public isn't really that sad or they don't really care that he died 
but the media is like the disproportionate nature of the media acting like so upset, like this is the biggest deal in the world, just really reveals how detached they are from like the general public, I think. I really don't think most people really care at all that he represents anything for them. We also yeah. just forgot to mention that he was one of the most anti-Trump, Cold War 2.0 pushing people out there in Washington, D.C., one of the most vocal. Three years ago, I did a scathing report about John McCain on breaking the set, <laughs> and he actually tweeted it out from his fucking official Twitter, and I'll link this on the timeline right now, where he said, Vlad continues his attacks against me, dot, 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 I'm honored. And so it was just astounding that he actually tweeted out a report literally calling him like a senile war criminal. <laughs> I feel like he might not have even watched it. Or maybe someone on his staff like fucking tricked him and they're like, just tweet this out and say it was like done by Vlad. <laughs> and, then, and then so that was great. He gave me a lot of publicity. Thank you. It wasn't Vlad. It was me. And then you have people like Dana Bash from CNN. So you have Dana Bash actually saying... While John McCain's coffin is being brought up to the steps of the Capitol, and it, I guess it was pouring rain, and I guess it stopped raining um, when his casket was being brought up the steps. And so Dana Bash said, the angels were crying. She said, here at CNN, just a few blocks away, no rain, just there. Is this real life? I just can't believe someone would actually hit tweet on that. I mean, yeah. at least hide the fact that you're in so much of a bubble that you basically seem like an alien to the general public. That is it's insane unbelievable. to publicly say something like that. Someone else, I don't even know if it was a CNN reporter, but they had a blue check mark and like 100,000 followers said that the date of 9-1-18, that McCain's death, should be celebrated or remembered just like 9-11. I... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the only media outlet that I actually oh, saw that God. ran some funny coverage on it that was like mainstream was the New York Post, of course, which is like a Murdoch owned outlet that I guess is still running stuff that's pro Trump. They had Megan McCain sobbing on the cover saying the Meg, like the shark movie with uh, Jason Statham, takes a bite out of Trump was their headline. <laughs> <laughs> Well, back to the civil society groups, you know, McCain was really heralding all of their causes everywhere from Syria to Ukraine to Libya. He's on the ground until these interventions happen. So, of course, it makes sense that Ken Roth, Human Rights Watch's executive director. So he says John McCain, quote, will be remembered for his firm principled opposition to torture. And then he says... Um, and then Human Rights Watch's Washington director said, quote, McCain's death quote, feels exceptionally tough for those of us who have fought for human decency and basic rights alongside and with him. Then you have Human Rights Watch's general counsel posting an article that called McCain, quote, a war hero. Then you have Human <laughs> Rights Watch following up with an official statement saying McCain was, quote, for decades, a compassionate voice for U.S. foreign and national security policy. It was Very so telling, huh? Just like Lockheed Martin. They like let the cat out of the bag. Very telling. Lockheed Martin is promoting John McCain for his years of service to their profits. And then you have Human Rights Watch being like, we fought alongside John McCain to spread human rights and democracy around the world. It's just so alarming, too. I feel like we've almost like regressed since that era, since like 2008 era, because that clip of him telling the woman that Obama was an Arab, he's a decent family man was like making the rounds as like an example of how compassionate and progressive McCain was it's like, no, 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 no. He's actually saying as a contrast that he's not an Arab. He's a decent family man to that like crazy fucking woman at, at his rally. What he's actually saying is that Arabs aren't decent people. Right. Oh yeah. Jamie Kirchick actually tweeted that the world is a more frightening place now without John McCain. <laughs> and Bill Crystal was, is still mourning the death, and even before the death, sort of like proto McCain death mourning already. I mean, seems like he's been mourning McCain's death for the past two weeks, posting little clips taken from his funeral, talking about how he's tearing up while watching them. Many, many, many tweets. It's very interesting. So I recommend checking out oh Bill Crystal's God, Twitter feed. What a complete psychopath, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> R.I.P. John dude. McCain. R.I.P.